Hey everyone! So as you may already know, we have a updated version of Smart Notebook that is ready for anyone to install who would like to have it from our software center. And I wanted to show you a couple of the new things that you might be able to use with your students that are built into Smart Notebook now. Uh, the one that I'm going to talk about right now is this guy right here. He kind of looks like a little space invader, but this is your activities button. And this allows you to create some really, really neat games that you can play with your students. Um, they can be done synchronously as well. Uh, if you have students who are working from home, uh, they can actually join into the game using a code and log in from a device. So let's take a peek at some of them. So let's go ahead and click on our little space invader guy here. Okay, so you can see we've got quite a few different options here of different games that we can create. Some of them are similar in the style of questioning, but it's just different fun ways of approaching it. So the first one is fill in the blank. A fill in the blank will allow you to put some text in and then you can select which words you want to be your blanks and then have a little game where your kids can drag and drop the correct answers in. So let's take a peek at that one first. So right now it wants me to put in my text here. So I'm just going to go and dump in some text. Okay, so I've gone ahead and put in uh, the first little bit of Hamlet's soliloquy. And you can see uh, first things is editing the text. So if you want to make any changes to anything or if you were typing something out, you can go ahead and make those changes now. And now we have to select the different words that we want to be our blanks. So to do that, we're going to click right here on the button that says define blanks. And now I can go through this text and I can click on the words that I want to appear as the blanks when we finally play this game. So let's just go ahead and click off a few of them. Just like that. We can also check how we want them to be uh, checked when we're done. So we can actually say, well, we'll only check to see if we got the right answers when prompted, or you can do instantly or not check at all. I'm gonna go with instantly and let's hit next. And I can even pick a theme. So as you can see, there's some really cute ones that would be really fun and engaging for our students. Or if you want, you can keep it simple with a very clean looking white and gray and black sort of motif. I'm going to go with the simple one for now so you can have a look at what it looks like. And we hit finish. And here we go. We are all set. And now we can have our students come to the board and drag and drop these in. There's a couple of different options we have for how we get our students to interact with this. Like I mentioned, if you have students who are working from home, you can have them join in from uh, their own device or if you want your students to uh, engage with it from a device right there in front of you, maybe you have some class iPads or they have uh, phones or something with them, we can go ahead and click on this picture of the mobile device and now we have a code. So your students will go to hellosmart.com, put that code in and you can see them connecting and then click start when they're ready to go. The other option, if we click on the star, is we can set this up to be kind of a buzzer game. We can use a randomizer, so you can actually load your students' uh, names in, or you can just use numbers. And then we can also have a timer. The buzzers one is really cute, so let's take a peek at what that looks like. So you can see now there's these two buzzers down at the bottom of my screen. And you could have your students go up against each other in teams. You can have as many as four of these buzzers and as few as two. All we do is click on that cog and change the number of buzzers. And then we drop in the answers. And you can see it automatically marks it as I go. I can review or I can reset. So if I click review, that's an opportunity to maybe talk about any mistakes that were made and we can review or you can restart and it will just set everything back to normal. 
The next one we're going to look at is flip out. So like I mentioned earlier, flip out would be like if you were going to make flashcards. So I'm going to go ahead here and I'm just going to quickly load in some text and images. Okay, so we've got them all loaded up. I have chosen a theme of uh, famous Canadians and we'll hit next. And again, we have some themes here. We can keep it simple or space or Mars or jungle. Um, also, things, I'll go, I'm going to once again go with a simple design for this. And so here we are. We now have a little game where you could have your students guess who the famous Canadian is. And so they might say, well, they might recognize this fella here uh, from the nature of things. So if you click on it, they could guess, is that David Suzuki? It sure is. Is this Terry Fox, Buffy St. Marie, and Oscar Peterson? And again, we still have our options over here where we can send a code for our students to join from home or virtually. And then we can also use our buzzers, randomizer, or a timer even. So let's use the timer for this one. Let's go back here and reset everything and I'll show you what the timer looks like. So there we go. And we can adjust this time as well if you wish to increase or decrease the amount of time that your students have. By all means, you can go ahead and do that. And then when it's time to start, we hit the play button and the countdown begins. And they have one minute to determine who these are. You could have your students work in small groups and maybe write it out uh, their guesses on a piece of paper or in their class notebook and then at the end of the buzzer review your work. So the next one we're going to take a peek at is our game show. Uh, game show is really cute. I, I get a big kick out of it just the way that it looks when it's set up. Uh, you have two options. Obviously, we can go true or false, or we can go multiple choice, your call. I'm going to go with a multiple choice one for this one. And I, once again, I'm just going to really quickly load in a few questions to show you how it works. So I'm just about to put the last question in. So how we go about this is you just type in whatever question is you want down here, and you put in your answers here. And whichever answer is the one that you want to be the correct answer, you simply check off by clicking one of these buttons next to the option. So, and if you need to add more, we can cl simply click add question up here, or if you wish to remove it, we do have an option to delete as well. We can also save if we need to, or delete everything and start from scratch. So I can save this content as, we'll just call this planets for now. And there we go, all saved and ready to go. And you can see now I can load content from here. And that's gonna come in really handy later on if I want to do other um, multiple choice games and reuse those same questions. So now that we're here, let's hit next. Those are my questions. I can randomize them if I want. And we'll hit finish and we'll see what our game show looks like. So as you can see, it is pretty cute. Right now it is muted. Um, if you want to toggle the sound on, you can toggle it on from here. So let's hit start and we'll take a peek at it. So you see you've got two teams right now. If you do need to go back and edit anything on the fly, you can click on that edit pencil and it will take you back here to revise and, and fix if you need to. So you can see our game show is ready to go and we'll click start to play it. So something you'll probably notice right out the uh, get go is that we don't have those same options that we had earlier. So this is a game that you would only be able to play uh, with kids who are directly in front of you. Um, so this might be a better option for teachers who do have their students all working with them at school. So for example, our elementary school teachers or middle school teachers or even uh, resource teachers that have a small cohort they're working with 
or possibly even our high school teachers that only want to uh, assess or work with the kids that are directly in front of them that day in that cohort. So it's quite a fun little game. As you can see, it's very attractive, very colorful, very bright. So it's a great way to keep our kids engaged and uh, allow them to practice and review some of their uh, knowledge in a fun and interesting way. And you just click on the wheel to spin to answer the question. So again, really fun, just a different way of uh, evaluating our students and letting them practice in a way that's kind of fun and cute. And you can see this was a tie. So there is a ranking that happens at the end of it. And like uh, we had with our fill in the blanks, we can also go back and review so if you wanted to go back and discuss some of those answers with your students, you can go ahead and click review and discuss the questions and why those are the correct answers and why or why they are the best answers. The next activity that we're going to look at is the label reveal activity. So first I'm going to load in a picture. I think this time we're going to do some science. So I am going to find my image of a animal cell. There it is. And uh, I actually preloaded some of the labels earlier. So I'm going to use my load button. There's my animal cell. And you can see I've got a list of my different objects here. And I can actually drag these over to the appropriate object on my image like that. So I'm going to go ahead and drag those in. So now I've loaded in my labels that I've got so far. Uh, if you want to go and add your own labels, you can just click anywhere within the image and then drag the little object to wherever you want it to be and add in your new piece of text. Just like that. You can also change the styles of these little pointers. Uh, there's a bunch of different ones. There's the triangle, there's a star, a square, a circle, or you can kind of mix them all up. So we're going to call that good. We're going to hit finish. And there we go. So now our students can play this little game. Again, they can play from home or you can use one of these features here with the buzzers, the timer, or the randomizer and have them play. And they can guess what these different objects are. And then all you have to do to reveal them is simply click on the question mark and it will tell you the object. Our next one is going to be a matching game. So this is a great one for working with memory or just trying to do a correspondence of one to one. So this would be a great one for practicing maybe vocabulary or learning a second language, which is the kind of activity I am going to make for this one. I'm going to make a little elementary school based activity or middle school based activity, depending on your students, um, where they have to match the animal with the French name for that animal. So you can see I've got category one and category two. So we'll call category one the uh, and the objet, the image, and we'll call this one the nom. And again, I'm just going to go through and load these up pretty uh, swiftly. Okay, so I have gone ahead and added in my images and the French names for these animals. Uh, you can have up to 10, so you could definitely have more than me. I'm just doing this as a quick example. And again, we can select whether we want uh, the answers to be checked instantaneously or just when we prompt. So this time I think I'm going to go with when prompted. So let's go ahead and hit next. And we can choose a fun little background for this one. So because we are dealing with animals, I think I'm going to go with this garden one. Uh, it is an elementary kind of activity as well, so this might be more engaging for my students. And there it has now loaded up and we can start playing our little matching game. 
So over here we have the images, like we said, the image, and over here we have the name of the animal, le nom. So let's just bring our little uh, shark guy up here. And we'll say we need to match that with the right word. So it's requin, just like that. And we'll keep going. Tiger is tigre. The bear is an ours. And the beaver is in castal. There we go. And because, like I said, we've decided that we're going to do a check at the end rather than immediate evaluation. Let's go ahead and check our matches. We've got check marks all over the place. Fantastic. And always you can review or reset if you want to go back and try it again. Maybe your students might want to try it one more time or you might have a different cohort you're playing with this time. And always you have your options along the side for how you wish to play this game with your students either in front of you or in front and virtually. The next game we're going to look at is the rank order. So this would be for sequencing skills and things like that. You may notice I am skipping over the monster quiz. That is because in this lesson right now, in this tutorial rather, uh, I'm just going to be focusing on the ones that don't uh, necessarily require a device, uh, where a device is optional. So again, we're just going to have to dump in some content here, some text or images. Um, I'm going to make a language arts activity of this one with a book series to put the books in the correct order of how they uh, could be read chronologically. So I'm going to go ahead and load those up. Okay, so I've gone in and added a list of books that were written by J.R.R. Tolkien in the order that uh, many argue that they should be read. Um, so from here we can do a couple of things. Uh, we can re actually reverse the order if you wanted to do that. Uh, we can, uh, if you had something saved from a previous lesson, uh, you can load in past content for this. We can save this content as well, or just go ahead and delete everything. And we can also decide how we want to check our answers. So we can obviously, like we've seen before, do it instantly or when prompted. And this one actually offers us another option of don't check. So that might be a good option if you wanted to uh, not have it checked right there in front of the kids and maybe it's something they have to go home and think about or uh, maybe it's something you want to review with them on your own. So for this one we'll just keep it with instantly and hit next and we can choose one of these really cute layouts if we want to or keep it plain. Uh, none of these really match with the theme of the Tolkien novels but maybe we'll go ahead and let's choose uh, the monster one just to keep it funny. There we go. And so now, just like we have before, we have our options along the side of how we choose to present this. And if we wanted to, we can just have our students go ahead and drag these into the order that they should be in. And you can get a cute little animation when it is done successfully. So yeah, it's a pretty straightforward one. Uh, and it can be done with images as well if you don't want to use text. The next one we're going to take a look at is Speed Up, which is a little racing game that allows you to practice multiple choice or true and false. Um, this one is a fast paced game, so it's really good if you want to practice uh, something that you want your students to have uh, know very quickly and practice that automaticity. So something like math facts would be a good one for this. So let's go ahead and click on it and we'll go with multiple choice and I'm going to go ahead and load in some quick math fact questions. All right, I have gone ahead and I have added in a few quick math fact questions that I want my students to practice and master and get better at. Uh, I'm actually going to go ahead and save this content as well it's always good to hold on to these things. You don't want to lose work that you've worked really hard on creating. All right, so let's hit next. Those are my questions. We're going to have 15 seconds to get that question right. If you want to, minim to uh, 
increase that number you can always increase it to 20 seconds or 10 you can decrease to 10 seconds or whatever you think works best for your students and depending on where they're at you may want to even remove that time limit as well less stress I'm going to keep the time limit in for this one and so let's hit finish and we're going to see a little racing game load up here So let's go ahead and click start. You'll notice again, this one is missing that little uh, piece on the side. So this is not one that you can play virtually, unfortunately. This is one that you would need to play with your kids uh, face to face. And also you can pick the number of racers, but I will caution you on that because if you're working with an older model smart board, you are not gonna have the multi-touch function that the newer ones have. So you're gonna have to stick with one racer. If you do have a newer smart board, you can try out using two to get that multi-touch going to see uh, if that works well for you. So this might be a good one if you're working with uh, a student who is getting maybe some extra support or if you're tutoring a student then this might be a fun way to practice that uh, skill that you're working on with them. So I'm just going to click the one because it's just me and I'll select my racer. I think I'll stick with this, uh, the bull. And this is where I'm going to select the correct answer. My little racer is going to go and I can click that. And there's my question. I only have 15 seconds to answer it. So I know that the answer is B. There we go. Is it gonna let me continue? It is. And here we go again, I'm gonna get another question. Three times six. Click C for 18. and I can keep going. So you can see where those questions are gonna pop up with these little arrows that appear on the board. So you might be wondering what happens if you get an answer wrong? Well, I think on this next one, let's, uh, let's intentionally mess this up. So I know it's 120, but I'm gonna just go with C just to show you what happens when you get it wrong. Kind of spins you out a little bit and slows you down. Six times six is 36. There it is, B. And we keep going. And I'll cross the finish line and it's going to give me my little celebration here. Uh, and then it's also going to tell me the amount of time that I did it in. So this is a great way if you're working on uh, building those skills with your students and you want them to be tracking or graphing how fast they're getting their math facts in, then you can always have them record that down in a, in a data notebook of some sort. And then we can also go back and review our answers to discuss, you know, I got this one wrong, well, you can go back and explain why is 10 times 12, 120. <laughs> and the last one that I'm gonna show you that does not require a device is the super sort. This is great for classification games and such. So we create our two categories and we add our text or images that we want in those categories. Uh, I think I'm going to build a little science activity uh, for my students about um, chemical changes versus physical changes as they are working on properties of matter. So I'm just going to go and get that loaded up for you. All right, so I've got my examples loaded in of chemical changes and physical changes. And I'm going to go ahead and save these so that in case I want to build or add on or reuse them maybe later on for a different game, then I can do that. All right, let's hit next. Again, we have our cute little backgrounds here. Uh, I think for this one, let's go with the garden. All right, 
it's all set and ready so down here we have our physical changes and up here in the beehive we have our chemical changes and we can drag and drop the appropriate bee to the appropriate area this one can be used either virtually or with your kids that are directly in front of you so you, that is a great option to have so let's just go ahead and start organizing these so we know that burning wood is a chemical change shredding paper is a physical change rotting banana is chemical and so on and so forth and so this is just a really cute way to practice these kinds of skills with your students and just make it a little more fun, a little more engaging, especially for our uh, at-home learners who might, uh, might be feeling like they are getting a little left out of the fun sometimes. There we go. So that's how we do that one. Now we're gonna take a look at some of the activities that you can do, but require that your students have a device. So these are really excellent options if you are working exclusively perhaps with students who are learning from home or perhaps you want to do a synchronous lesson and you have uh, devices at your uh, school that you can use. Perhaps you have a class set of iPads or perhaps your students are already bringing technology with them to school such as a laptop or a phone or some sort of tablet. So let's take a peek at this one here called Monster Quiz. And so this is very similar to the uh, quiz we did uh, involving the speed up, where it is a timed quiz that your students can complete uh, multiple choice or true and false questions. Um, and what we'll do is it will actually divide your class into two teams so that they can compete against each other to see who can get the uh, the monster to hatch the fastest. So I'm gonna go with multiple choice and I'm gonna load in my math facts from earlier. And we'll keep the 15 second time limit per question. Um, and I will let them be randomized so that my students won't get the same questions on, this, uh, on their devices. So that will mix it up for them. Um, and like before, we can toggle that time limit off if that is not something that you want to have for your students. And same thing for random, maybe you're working on building their um, math facts of a certain group and you want them to practice going up or down through those math facts. So now we're just gonna hit finish. And so this is what it looks like, very cute. Uh, I've got the sound turned off right now. But can I have the sound on if you really it's cute. And so we're gonna go ahead and we can uh, go ahead and if you need to clear the students, we can just start clear them. Uh, and there is the code. The nice thing about um, the code that is used uh, within Smart Notebook is that your code is always going to be the same. So that code on, on the screen right now is the code that my students will always use to access my uh, class notebook activities. So if you want to, you could probably have that written down somewhere handy for them, perhaps on your board, or you could post it in your class team, or you could jot it down in their agenda, and it will always be the same. It will never change for them. So I'm going to allow some students to connect first, and then we'll start the game. Okay, so I've got a couple of students who have joined with me today. Uh, a quick note on how your students connect to uh, this on this site, this hellosmart.com. There are two options for them. They can log in with their Microsoft account, which would be the same account that they use to access Teams or their email or to log on to a computer at school. Um, or they can simply log in as a guest and type in their name uh, and not have to worry about using their Microsoft login, their Microsoft account. So depending upon your students and depending upon their level of comfort with logging into their Microsoft account, you may choose to use uh, the guest feature. All right, so we've got the two kids, we're ready to go. Let's get started. So they've got their devices ready to go and now I can 
divide them into two teams. Unfortunately, you cannot change the names of the teams. It is just what it is. So for today, we have our fire breathers versus our lava slingers. So let's go ahead and let's start. So the kids are on their device and they're getting the questions. So they'll need to work quickly at answering those. And you can see that uh, it keeps a track on the board of who is getting them quicker. And again, these are also timed questions for them. So there is that building the skill of automaticity so that they have to work quickly to get things correct. And it's kind of neat watching the little hatchling grow as well. And you can see that, you know, it, it is kind of a cute little activity. It's just a fun way to get your students practicing their math facts or really any skill. And so now we can see that this team won and my students both have messages on their screen saying uh, either if they've won or if they finished. And we can go back and review as well. So we can see that both teams got 100% correct, how long it took each of them to finish. And th so this is a great way also if you're doing any sort of data tracking on your students, how fast can they get through those math facts? You can graph that and track it. And uh, we can also do a full class review, which will allow us to go back and look at all those questions together and discuss if there was any mistakes, you know, why the correct answer is what it is. So yeah, really fun way, very engaging, cute little activity for perhaps elementary school or maybe a, a lower middle school level or who knows, even high school level. <laughs> the next activity that we'll be looking at that requires the device is the response one. And this is a really interesting one because it has such different options for you to use. Uh, we have multiple choice and true and false, but now we also have multiple answer, a poll, and a short answer. So if you're looking to get maybe a, a written response from your students, you could use that instead. Or if you're just looking to maybe do a quick survey and you want to keep it within your smart notebook files, then you can always poll your students as well. And that's actually the activity that I'm going to do right now is I'm going to do a poll with my students. And I already made one earlier, so I'm just going to load it up from my saved folder here. There it is. So I've done this one about how do you prefer to do your schoolwork. So this might be a good one to do if you are starting a new semester or perhaps you're switching into, um, for our grade five teacher, switching over into your English component or into your French component. Or if you just want to quickly, you know, maybe you want to find out a little bit more about how your students want to complete their work. So I've got this poll ready to go. I can add more questions if I want to and have a, a longer poll, but for today, we're just going to stick with this one question. So let's go ahead and hit next. We can give this a little title if we want to, maybe some instructions if needed. So let's go ahead and title this uh, homework poll. And we'll just say pick the best answer for your work habits. There we go. And we'll hit finish. So you can see my students are already logged in still from the previous activity. They haven't logged off. So if you plan on doing several activities with your students from their devices, this is a kind of a nice feature that's built into the, the smart learning suite is that uh, if your students are logged in to their um, accounts, then they don't have to go and log in and log out every single time that you create a new activity. They just stay logged in and we can start. So now they're both getting a little poll sent to their devices and they can complete that. So one of the neat things about this is we can either have it show the percentage of students who have responded or we can actually go and do a live result. So it will actually tally up how they like to do them and you can graph that and it's kind of a neat little thing to see. And we can adjust as well how we want to see that graph. 
So let's go and let's see how our students like to do their homework. So we've got our two responses, 100% of them. There's only two kids today. And again, we can change the graph results as well for their answers. They can do a pie chart or we can do a bar graph. So this is a great uh, way, if you're doing maybe a math activity as well, you can discuss how those two things are the same and how you can just graph things differently. So that is just another feature that we can do. This is a very uh, multifunctional feature as well as you notice there's lots of options in this response feature for you know not only our typical multiple choice and true and false but to do polls or short answers. There's quite a variety so this is a really powerful uh, response system. And our final activity that our students can do uh, provided they have their devices ready to go is shout it out. So shout it out is a brainstorming activity. So we have a couple of options here where it can just be randomized. So this would be an option where perhaps your students already know what they're going to be brainstorming about. Perhaps you've already talked about it with them or if you want to you can actually have categories. So for this one, we're just gonna stick with the randomized one just to show you how it works. But if you're interested in using categories, you can just go ahead and type in the names of your categories right there and it will prompt them to put their ideas in the correct category. So we'll go with randomize. We can have our students either attach images or simply type out a response. Uh, sadly, they can't have both, so it's kind of one or the other. So you have to know your students for this one a little bit uh, if image is going to be an easier thing for them to access or if text is going to be an easier thing for them to access. We can also change the number of submissions they can put in. So it might be one of those things where you want to have a lot of ideas. You can increase the number of answers a student can put in or perhaps you're just looking for one. So for this we'll go ahead and we'll just put one. The other thing that we can do is uh, we can preserve the anonymity of our students as well. We can hide their names so it doesn't show who has said what or we can go ahead and show them. So no, you'll have to know your students a little bit for this too. Perhaps they're more comfortable with their names being hidden and maybe they're okay with everybody knowing. So that's kind of up to them and you. So for this one I am going to hide their names and we will just hit finish. And so here we go, we've got our students, they're ready to go. I can start my activity. And we would have to imagine that uh, my students know what their response is. I, I want them to give me an idea of maybe what book should we read next in class. And so we'll get our students to answer, what book should we read together next? So we can see that this student wants Dyer Van Frank to be our next one. And we have another response. You can see that it is kind of tying them to a little bit of an image. However, um, I think that would be different if there was more kids involved. And I can actually pull certain ones up if I want to, and we can talk about that option. Um, and perhaps, you know, if, I, if that's not an option, perhaps it's a book we've already read and we don't want to have to go and reread them, then we can just grab and we can trash them if we need to. Um, this would also be something perhaps you could discuss as a class and they could just, you know, as they sort of figure out which ones maybe they don't want to read after all, we can remove those options as needed. So there you go. So those are the activity uh, features that are built into Smart Notebook 19. Hopefully you have found one or maybe a few of them that you think will be handy for you as you teach your students. And 
as always, if you want any support or if you have any questions, by all means, you can reach out to any of the technology coaches and we would be more than happy to help you out with this.